aircraft, the Hurricane, the Spitfire and the Lancaster. Uh, so British in so many different ways. And of course that flight being set up just five years after Her Majesty acceded to the throne. Uh, well, we're just on the airwaves now. We hear our uh, pilots checking in and we look forward very much now to welcoming this uh, great sight back in the skies here today. and flanked by a Spitfire and a Hurricane. Such an iconic uh, picture. More detail, but let's enjoy this first part of their display before they split into their various solo activities. sight and sound, the most iconic figure you will see in the sky, the brainchild of R.J. Mitchell and his extraordinary uh, team. In the hands today, uh, Mark Sugden, he's the officer commanding the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, and what an outstanding uh, job that must be to hold. Quite one of the most special... Now keep your eyes peeled as the handover is about to take place. Look out for the hurry coming in from the far side as Suggs uh, maneuvers for his uh, final pass. And a typical weight at all they increase hugely by the end of the war, but the hurricane was the one that bore the brunt of those tough days of 1940. classic fighters of all times, designed and built for war. Know the hands of Sidney Cam, who had the most extraordinary career, working right through from uh, this aircraft to the Harrier. In the hands of a uh, new name on the block for the BBMF today, the flight lieutenant Charles Croft. He's an ex-Harrier and Typhoon pilot, so most recently flew as a test pilot on 41 Squadron before moving to 206. And uh, he's joined the flight now to take over from Flight Lieutenant Andy Priest as the next operations officer. Alongside, obviously, the boss, Mark Sugden, and uh, quite two of the most outstanding jobs for any Royal Air Force officer to hold. The flight of Hurricane took place in November 1935, deliveries to the Air Force not long after to uh, Triple One Squadron at uh, North Carolina with a retractable main undercarriage.
crowd fame as Tally Call goes out as uh, the last part of the solo hurricane display takes place. Keep your eyes out. This will be replaced by the Lancaster coming in. A remarkable 14,533 hurricanes were built. The aircraft served operationally on every day throughout hostilities in every operational theatre. Demonstrating the marvelous coastline here, skimping over the trees, this magnificent machine. was absolutely outstanding. It carry a maximum bomb load of 22,000 pounds at a level speed with a full load of 15,000 feet. It was 270 miles an hour. You could easily cruise routinely at altitudes above 20,000 feet with a range speed of around 200 miles an hour. It's uh, quite astonishing what it achieved with a full bomb load. It had a range in excess of 1,500 miles. Over 7,000 Lancasters were built between 1941 and 1946. Of these, very sadly, over 3,000 were lost on operations and another 200 or so were destroyed or written off in crashes. The vast majority did not survive and of course uh, this one now so valuable to our nation. The other being across the big pond in Canada. Lancaster supported by many other well-known and famous uh, twin-engine bombers as well, the Wellington and the other four-engine heavy bombers, the Sterling and the Halifax, as well as medium bombers such as the De Havilland Mosquito. But it is the cruise that we remember here, remember the memorial features as a key name in this Battle of Britain flight. And in total, uh, 125,000 air crews served in bomber command during World War II. Over 73,000 of them became casualties, either killed, wounded, or shot down, or made prisoners of war. into the airwaves now to commence the uh, final maneuvers a slight change to their uh, normal routine i believe the uh, lancaster will be departing solo with the fighters uh, departing separately so another chance now you see the gear down coming in low and slow
now then for the final stages of this uh, marvelous start to the English Riviera and Jubilee air show here. The last pass from the mighty Avro Lancaster. In addition to the 125,000 crew that we mentioned just in bomber command, let's not forget also with the fighter boys present here today, the number of air crew that fought in fighter command each project over to the network rail, where we are going to photograph or image every single meter of network rail tracks so that we can do a assessment of the tree health of the trees next to the, to the tracks and here they come and all uh, the team either side over to the right hand side look boys and girls over the top of the pier there oh what a wonderful sight that is and certainly uh, not one that you see very often at all uh, around uh, the united kingdom and a real tribute to the welcome back of not only this show, but of course, our own mini tribute to the Platinum Jubilee as well. Absolutely superb. And that was the team leader, Andy Evans, you may have just heard chatting away in the background there. Gives the commands as to when to turn and also when to put the... Okay, so they're just uh, pulling up a little bit there in the turn. A really unique opportunity and a unique uh, fly past. Superb. Blaze has been very fortunate over the years to have taken part in so many different unique uh, fly paths. Uh, is almost a reopening, having already had the Battle Brew Memorial flight uh, here today. A tremendous opportunity. So basically, uh, don't forget, of course, uh, the pilots in the blades, extras there, the uh, small aircraft you can see left and right of the Chinook, all ex-Royal uh, Air Force themselves, all ex-Red uh, Arrows pilots as well. And the Chinook, of course, one of the most heavily used operational helicopters of the entire fleet constantly on call for all sorts of missions around the world and their dedicated crews you'll hear more about them when their commentator joins us in the box a little later on stand by now for the first major break of the afternoon of this wonderful english riviera air show smoke coming on absolutely outstanding Evans, Blade 1 leads the team into the first loop of the display, calling for Blades 2 and 3 to move forward into box formation. Followed by Blade 4, this is the box loop. Andy, a founding member of the Blades, has flown in every position on the team and is a former Red Arrow and Jaguar pilot and has flown over 3,000 hours. The team will now head directly back towards the crowd line at full speed and in staggered formation for the first break of the display, pulling up to 8G to perform the crossfire break. Now looking to your left and right, blades two and three perform the first pairs sequence of display. Blade three, Mike Ling, is the longest serving Red Arrow pilot. Mike will now lead the pair to perform a variation of point rolls, snap rolls before crossing the center line to pull up into quarter circles with snap rolls. Now to perform the snap rolls, the pilot stalls the aircraft and uses a boot for the rudder to force the aircraft to roll rapidly. Now approaching for our opposite directions, blades one and four go head to head performing synchronized aileron rolls. Crossing in the center line of the display before pulling up into the vertical to climb to 1,000 feet. 
are now going to hold the aircraft pointing straight up until there's no forward speed, at which point you'll see them stop completely before gravity starts to win and pulls them on their back. Now as they descend back down, the aircraft on the right is Blade 4, James McMillan, also known as Z. James started his career as the youngest fast jet pilot for the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Actually one of my least favourite manoeuvres as the aircraft gets covered in smoke oil and I was the one that you generally had to clean it. Now looking to your left you'll see Andy leading Blades 2 and 3 into a crowd favourite crazy. Back for another season by popular demand. Adapted from the original version, Blade 1 is now flying inverted at the front of the formation while Blades 2 and 3 work hard on the rudder to demonstrate an unnatural way to fly and Blade 4 sprawls around the smoke created about with the other aircraft. This is our most dedicated to our prime sponsor for another year, it's actually the seventh year. This manoeuvre will give you the perfect view of their logo on the underside of their wings. Aerobytes specialise in delivering aviation safety software, providing solutions to over 200 airlines. for the team's formation to change to the tango formation for the next bend. This is simply named tango because of the T-shape. And as the blades are all approach us in the tango formation, you can clearly see on their tails with the red and white logos of our new sponsor of 2022, UASA. UASA batteries are the number one selling brand for all types of cars, vehicles and industry uses. They are made by GS UASA, the world's leading ba battery manufacturer who powers thousands of applications from submarines to the International Space Station and everything in between. Now they have moved into line of breast formation to perform the hammerhead. The team will perform a stall turn in perfect formation. All four pilots pull up to the vertical and performs tight stall turns to our left. Entering the second half of the display now, our team our display lasts around 15 minutes and consists of over 30 separate and exhilarating manoeuvres. Each aircraft travels 50 air miles during the display and we have three types of display routine depending on the cloud base. Full, rolling or flat. Now changing to line of stern formation, Andy will call smoke on as the team perform the half loop with each aircraft sliding out to the left in the snake. The Blades charity partner, the RAF Benevolent Fund, have worked with the team for over eight years now. The fund is a leading welfare charity for the RAF and provides assistance support to any member of the RAF family. Please set a website at the RAF bf.org together they would now perform the iconic shape in the sky so cameras at the ready for the heart dedicated today to the Ros Rosecroft Hospice. Yes, I think we've got some guests here today, Tony, from the Road Cross Hospice, so well done to them, 40 years of uh, delivering that service, fantastic. 
Brilliant now, so if we keep our eyes out, we're going to 2006. by fully half into the vertical to perform synchronized longshoreback. Longshoreback is a check word meaning headache or hangover. And I think you can see why. Now if we look straight back out to the crowd center, we will see blades one and four approaching, pulling up into the vertical to perform knife edge spins. This is a very dynamic maneuver that involves the aircraft spinning around the wingtips at minus three G whilst dropping vertically downwards. Now if we stay with James on the right again, he would lead us into the second solo of this flight, which starts with a manoeuvre we like to do the central. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a champagne split and you have been watching The Blades. During this display season, you'll see us flying with the UK's most deployed aircraft, the Royal Air Force Chinook helicopter. This particular one is one of the Mark VI Alpha models, which is the most numerous of the RAF fleet. Looking into the display area, you'll see the Chinook is descended to low level. It is its cruising speed of 120 knots. The crew will shortly begin their new routine, which has had a few changes from previous seasons. And here they go, ladies and gentlemen. I give you the 2022 Chinook display. The aircraft now breaks to the left to reset its maneuver and offset wing over. This is a challenging maneuver with the co-pilot Flinney who is sat on the left hand seat, not only calling out Schmitty's pitch angle, roll angle, his heights and speeds, but also glancing out to the left hand side, talking him around until he can see his display line again. Year, the Chinook display captain is Flight Lieutenant Matt Smythe, known as Schmitty. Schmitty joined the RAF in 2007 and has been on 27 squadron for the last 10 years. He's a training captain and has operated in Afghanistan, Mali, the Falklands and Europe, among many others. Back in the UK, he was the captain of the National Standby Aircraft called to support the crisis at Wadey Bridge back in 2019. be pitched up to 50 degrees to complete the first nose over. The crew will then dive down to their base height before repeating the maneuver to complete the famous roller coaster. During this maneuver, the challenge for the crew is to descend onto crowd center between nose overs whilst controlling a 15 ton aircraft which is being pushed into the beach by the strong winds. Joining Smitty in the cockpit today is Flight Lieutenant Simon Flynn, one of our two display co-pilots for the season. Flynn joined the Royal Air Force in 2010 before converting to the Chinook and joining 27 Squadron in 2017. He has deployed to Mali and the Falkland Islands in support of UK operations and has been on several overseas training exercises. The maneuver is more difficult in this direction as Smitty can no longer see the crowd line to judge his spacing and is so totally reliant on Flynn's directions for accuracy. Now let's have a listen to the directions and attempt to hear what's being said in between the crew. to the left. Three 
this time, Smitty, who is in the right-hand seat, has a full view of everyone, so please give him a huge wave. The display today demonstrate how surprisingly manoeuvrable this large helicopter is. Most of the manoeuvres are born out of real tactical skills employed on operations around the world. During these manoeuvres, the co-pilot's eyes are constantly darting around the cockpit. They are checking aircraft performance and monitoring aircraft speeds, pitch, roll parameters and height, relaying them to Smitty so he can remain Stop. eyes out. This allows the pilots to decelerate rapidly and turn on a sixpence, allowing the crew to land quickly to support troops in need of assistance. to enjoy the best view in the house. This is your chance to give them a huge wave as they cross the display area. In the cabin today is Sergeant Daniel Gilderson, known as Gilders. Gilders joined the RAF in 2009 and is converted onto the Chinook in 2016. In his six years on 27 Squadron, he has deployed to the Falklands and Mali multiple times and taken part in many exercises around the world. He enjoys playing squash to keep fit and fills his spare time with swimming, recently completing a swimathon, swimming 15 kilometers for charity. The Chinook has been constantly used by the Air Force as a battlefield helicopter for over 40 years. It first saw action in the Falklands Islands conflict in 1982 and has been seen operational use in Iraq, Afghanistan and most recently in Mali, to name a few. Its heavy lift capacity, combined with power, speed and agility, ensure that even during the hottest summers and darkest nights, the force always completes its missions. Supporting the display aircraft this year are an exceptional team of engineers, many fresh back from operations in Mali. Leading the engineers is Flight Lieutenant Nate Rowett, and we could not put this fantastic display on for you today without their hard work and dedication. The crew are approaching a call. the top they begin their 405 degree spiral descent. Everyone on 27 Squadron are extremely proud to bring you the 2022 Chinook display. We do this alongside our operational and frontline deployed commitments while also conducting all of our regular duties, training and tasking throughout the UK. towards crowd before breaking to the right at high speed. This is the most likely time to hear our famous blade slap and enjoy the full force of the Chinook. At this point, we would like to give a huge shout out to the family of our display supervisor, Flight Lieutenant Squ Correction Squadron Leader Bennett. Thank you for all the support you show us and the Chinook force. This year, the team are proud to highlight the work of the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund as supporting the personnel, the veterans and a wide RAF family. As you saw earlier today, we do this alongside our awesome display from the Blades team and keeping the landing site in full view ahead of the aircraft. The nose is raised high and due to the design of the Chinook, it reduces speed rapidly by presenting the two rotor discs into the oncoming airflow, acting like a huge air brake. Once slow enough, the crew can then descend further to land or to come to the hover. A final wave as Flinny flashes the landing lights to say goodbye before departing backwards over the shoulder. Don't forget to enter our photo competition for the chance to win one of our official Chinook display team patches. Please send your best shots from today's display as we do love looking through them. 
For the email address to enter, please see our Chinook display social media feeds, and good luck with those taking part. He calls it, uh, it's called Jet Pits in the hands of Richard Goodwin, and he is going to uh, display what he refers to as his muscle biplane display, an absolutely outstanding machine. engineering degree at university, he then joined the Air Force himself and flew the Tornado, and uh, a pretty impressive training period that was for him. He went on, however, to uh, leave the Air Force and join uh, the airlines and uh, still flies airliners, but during his spare time, he totally dedicated himself to doing this sort of high dynamic, uh, really high pressure, high G uh, maneuvering in a Pitts special. Now the Pitts is a marvelous aircraft designed by Curtis Pitts back in the uh, mid-1940s and been continuously re refined to this very day in the hands of the likes of people like uh, Richard. Now one of the most famous was actually made famous by a lady uh, called Betty Skelton and many of the Pitts in those early days had little skunks printed on the uh, side of it and her aircraft, the Little Stinker, after years of really memorable flying displays now hangs in the Smithsonian Aviation Museum across in Washington, D.C. You can see it in that museum right next to Dallas Airport if you're ever passing through D.C. Uh, then go and have a look and you'll see it upside down in the hangar. But let's keep our attention on Richard. Who pulls some of the most exciting maneuvers on the air display circuit? Lots of negative tumbles, lots of vertical rolls, snap rolls, and later on we'll see his tower of power. But here he is now in the washing machine mode, on fast spin, just disorienting the entire universe in front of his very eyes. Away. Not much else can, I can assure you. You don't see this every day, and of course, a huge amount of practice and effort goes into preparing for this sort of display. The physical demands are absolutely intense, and uh, you cannot imagine really the, um, the pulling of the G uh, that this aircraft is capable of. Um, really outstanding, and of course, in a much improved uh, aircraft as well. It's uh, good up to plus six and minus six. Now, plus six, you're weighing one G at the moment, so that's just your normal body weight. Now imagine a big pressure coming down on top of you, twice that weight, three times the weight, four times. So when he's going up into these loops, he's pulling up to 6G, six times his body weight, and all the blood is trying to drain down to his legs. And you have to work very hard, tensing your muscles around your stomach and your waistline to stop that happening. But then, of course, when he goes upside down, the reverse happens. And in this case, he's actually defying gravity with the aircraft by virtually flying it on the propeller. And he's just hanging on there as if it's the aircraft's about to stall, but it's just the sheer weight now. Big engine in here, 300 horsepower, uh, modified Lokoming, uh, i.e. 540 engine. And it's really, really impressive. And he's just literally using, it's hanging on by the propeller. And he'll fall back just slightly now, you see the smoke on, and you can just see how hovering that. It's an amazing machine and an amazing uh, ability to be able to do this in any fixed wing aircraft. Now it's no ordinary aircraft as I think you can imagine this one. It's not like the originals at all. He's really modified this and uh, 
it's an improvement on his G-Wiz, which you may have seen, his uh, red and white Jubilee colored aircraft coupling up here in uh, total, uh, not total disorientation because of course he trains for this, but just coming out on the top there and then in a flat, flattish spin, coming back down, all the world going round and round. But this one's unique, it's got massive ailerons, a warm wing area, giving it a very, very high roll rate and much, much better low speed handling as he's just been demonstrating. movement in the control com there, those flick rolls and uh, snap rolls, all requiring a lot of really intense uh, work in the cockpit. This is not an aircraft you can buy off the shelf. It may look the same as many others, but you certainly can't. It's had an extensive modification uh, program, allowing Richard to uh, perform an extraordinary brand good measure. Building up the speed now, increasing speed, and as he pulls up, he'll put in almost a dozen different maneuvers whilst the world spins around his AK. All the way up until the aircraft runs out of airspeed, holding on that propeller, almost going gyroscopic where the wings aren't doing much, the propeller's doing everything until totally gives up on him and the whole aircraft falls back down, tumbling head over heel through his own smoke system. Up. Uh, one of his uh, major sponsors is the Savio Group. They're involved in digital uh, transformation and working on the next generation of STEM aviators as well and also engineers. STEM, of course, science, technology, engineering and mathematics, uh, something we want all our kids to get involved in. It's serving uh, currently 600 customers over 65 countries with their uh, experience and expertise in technology and insight. And Richard Goodwin, uh, benefiting from that, but also promoting the good work they're doing as well. By Richard pushing the boundaries with his own aviation pursuits and aerobatic flying, he's helping the uh, company themselves also do the same thing. With this uh, incredible muscle biplane, a unique aircraft, modified structure, and eventually we'll have two Lynx jet turbine engines mounted on the forward fuselage. I've been up to his factory and had a look at the development. It's just going to be such an exciting machine when he gets that all completely each way. Ready, boys and girls. Richard Goodwin, the most extraordinary character, totally dedicated to his profession. And now and again, he might just be flying into a holiday. India Tango. As I said, leading up to what we have here now, a combat derivative of the Jetpoppers Mark V. Had huge uh, success in its uh, own day, very uh, popular aircraft. The uh, design of the first family of jet robbers goes back well into the uh, early 50s when the Air Force were looking for a new uh, training aircraft. And of course, uh, in the 50s, that was very much the age of the jet uh, developing across a whole range of different uh, uh, airframes. And they were looking to uh, replace the first well uh, robbers in those days. Uh, the first jet, the Mark III version, uh, took place, uh, its first prototype uh, flight in June 1954, and armed with uh, two 7.7 .7 machine guns, and then later, of course, uh, having more armament. This one, however, uh, had a long story involved with the Omani Air Force. It was actually a, uh, originally destined to go elsewhere, uh, but was picked up to replace uh, one that was lost by the Omanis in the uh, 80s and uh, put together uh, with a set of uh, various different components from different aircraft and ended up being identified as constructor number 
425 uh, being refitted and delivered as a Mark 82 Alpha. Ferried to Oman in uh, the summer of 1986 by two uh, serving Sultan of Oman Air Force pilots and commenced service with one squadron at the Royal Air Force of Oman Station in Masira. Not always necessary, of course, but uh, generally having had its uh, origins in a uh, training aircraft development, uh, instructional seat always there as well. Relatively nice weight, just under 5,000 pounds, but uh, able to uh, lift up to 9,200 pounds on uh, takeoff. The familiar sound of the Armstrong Sydney Viper engine there as well. But uh, pretty good performance, maximum speed of 440 miles an hour, that's uh, 25,000 feet. Service ceiling at 36,000 feet in the 1950s to 1980s era of aircraft. And you can see very deftly uh, handles by Mark. And he's just called uh, complete. Very smooth, very accomplished uh, piece of flying there from Mark Petrie. And uh, also three, four group uh, going first, you can see a trailing smoke. As they're coming out, they're opening their canopies. So there should be seven parachutes in the air. Now you can easily tell who the jump master is, that's Sergeant Frank Miller with the Union Jack canopy. And it was you wore specially for the Jubilee celebrations. So it's hard to tell with the altitude at the moment, but what you should see is a free-fall group coming down first, which you can see them spinning down now, spiraling down, and then you've got the crew group, okay, which is Simon Frank Miller up there with the Union Jack canopy, uh, and he's docking on to Corporal Will Forbes. So the crew group are doing what you would think, in a, certainly when you're learning parachuting, you wouldn't want to do, which is where you crash your canopies into each other. So at the moment you've got coming down, you've got Corporal Ant Highland, first one down, so a nice flare, straight onto his feet. <laughs> what sort of speeds are they doing? I know they're coming down fast, but they're going forward fast as well. Yeah, they're fun. going forward fast, they're going pretty fast as they're coming down. Okay, that, that was uh, Corporal Liam Donovan's coming down there. Okay, we've got Corporal Jacob Jackson as well with the green smoke. Now they're going down from about 30 miles an hour, then as they flare, they're slowing right down to probably about 6 miles an hour, so it's fast into winds. Now if you look up to the sky now, you've got a two stack formed with the Union Jack canopy. You got, there's a split there as it's come in. Start Frank Miller in the Union Jack canopy, and you've got Corporal Will Forbes flying the UJ flag. Uh, you then got Corporal Matthew Botterwright flying the Army flag, just coming in to land. Now the final three canopies coming around. So Corporal Will Forbes doing his final turn. Over and then right next to the T. Start Frank Merrick, last little one. And then you got Matthew Botchwright, final one. The Just there, 19, 1944, Spitfire Mark 9, Tango Alpha 805, the spirit of Kent. And uh, this uh, aircraft very much represents uh, the huge collective effort that the number of uh, cities around the United Kingdom made during the course of the Second World War. And uh, in those days, of course, um, buying a, a Spitfire was relatively cheap, several hundred pounds. Now, of course, uh, they're all worth well over a million. Um, but in those days, everybody got together to help the war efforts by collecting it, and many, many uh, towns uh, were, had their uh, names on the side. And of course, uh, another Spitfire, uh, famously named the city of Exeter, not far from here, is actually uh, itself operated out of uh, Goodwood along the coast in Sussex. This aircraft built at Castle Bromwich um, back in 1944. First allocated to uh, 183 uh, Squadron. Uh, but then after the war went on to join the South African Air Force uh, before 
being sent initially uh, almost to the, literally to the rubbish tip, but eventually saved and restored by uh, Steve Atkins, an excellent uh, restorer and uh, man heavily involved with Vinci Jones. and restored by Peter Monk and by Mike Simpson. Peter Monk now running the Biggin Hill Heritage Hangar, that famous airfield. And a marvellous place to visit. He does hangar tours there, so I can urge you to go along to that. But uh, the pilot today uh, really needs no introduction. Steve Jones um, has pretty much uh, done it all. He first flew aerobatics back in the late 1970s and uh, went on to teach aerobatics, spent many years with the Tiger Club, purchased his own Sukhoi as well before joining the British team for the World Championships in Hungary. He was the UK freestyle aerobatic champion back in the 90s and uh, went on and on then to fly famously with the Red Bull Matadors alongside Paul Bonham and uh, has got so many hits on YouTube, it's not uh, it's not worth counting, uh, an extraordinary calibre, still flying, um, uh, I think, part-time now for uh, British Airways on the big jets, but it's just got us accumulated a huge number of hours, and great pleasure to have him in this wonderful spin by years ago. of that wonderful elliptical wing. Genius, uh, as I mentioned earlier today, of RJ Mitchell and his team. Still resplendent, still tugging away at those heartstrings and filling us with joy. Harnessed beautifully with the same heritage from Rolls-Royce, Charles Rolls, of course, uh, involved in the development of aviation himself back in the start of the last century. Tremendous British success story. Many of them now restored and reconfigured into two-seat configuration. You can get the chance to find these for a not inconsiderable amount of money, but uh, what pleasure it gives us all. pilots definitely handling these aircraft now. They're so valuable to not just their owners, but to the entire nation. Keep the history and memory of those operations alive for us all. Excellent aircraft, very strong, very robust. Coming out of a loop and of course, keeping the G very, very smooth to complete that. This time they'll be pulling up into what we call a quarter clover. So they turn a little bit away from you. And then they're pull coming up. out of a wing over, running in, this time for another loop. She's coming on, just a little bit of pressure there. As they get to the top of the loop, they look out, look uh, behind them almost to get the horizon of the aircraft. Keep the whole thing very, very smooth. They're absolute specialists of this. Repositioning now. Big, big wing over to the uh, left-hand side. Leading 
the team, Jez Hopkinson, he's the owner of the Jakob Lebs display team, has led the team since way back in 1998, so quite a long time indeed. Started off, bought his first Yak 52, that's a beefier version, and uh, very strong and uh, unique to uh, Jez actually. All that and uh, founded the European Yak Club, and that grew hugely, it's now got hundreds of members all over Europe, and set up the display team in uh, that uh, same year as well. He's also a very accomplished CA examiner, has his own aerobatic flying school, and involved uh, with the air display world on a formal basis, checking currencies and also evaluating other people's displays. The team now repositioned in line astern, and uh, coming up behind him there is Jim Schofield. He first learned to fly in uh, Clacton joined the University of Wales Air Squadron before going on to get his commercial pilot's license and then joining the Royal Air Force. Got an amazing career, a lot of fun flying, 20 years uh, service, became the MOD's lead Harrier and F-35 test pilot. So a very accomplished uh, graduate of the Empire Test Pilot School and finally became the wing commander in charge of the F-35 requirements. Flew for British Airways for three years, but uh, he's now involved in consultancy and flies for the Volby Flight Academy, and uh, an awful lot of time is spent flying the Spitfire. He's got a huge pedigree behind him, flying a whole range of uh, frontline fighters way back from the historic types of the 1917 Bristol Fighter, Spitfire, the SE-5, Mustang, Big and Jaguar, so, so many more. And the, uh, these guys, together with the other work that um, Jez does, actually a massive amount of air display experience. Jez. Beautiful break, reversing back now. They're coming to a series different maneuvers where they're head on hand. This time they're going to cross right in front of you along the displays line, so keep your eyes posted. Some great photographic opportunities. And they're performing one going off in a derry turn. That's where you turn uh, the opposite way to the way you're intending the aircraft to go. Mate, uh, Famous as a the fighter evasion maneuver by John Derry. Repositioning now for another really neat maneuver, the caterpillar loop. Keeping the G absolutely spot on, keeping it smooth, looking over the back, come right over your shoulder behind you, checking the horizon. And you can see just how deeply they stay in each other's tracks there.
exactly what you are on, you and I are now. Please put your hands together for the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows! 